Hi all, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Bloat in young animals, usually animals and goat kids, is for whatever reason one of my key areas of interest. So much death, so much misinformation, so much misunderstanding. So here's a quickie on why I have beef with the term bloat. Before I climb on my soapbox, please don't forget to subscribe. If you're enjoying the episodes, thumbs up to let me know that you're there and appreciating them. So bloat, and I'm going to talk about in lambs, but just to be clear, this is the same story in calves and in goat kids. Bloat in lambs is almost across the board considered abomasal bloat. That's just people's go-to. And it's not always abomasal bloat. If you Google how to treat lamb bloat, what is lamb bloat, that sort of thing, it's almost always going to be talking about abomasal bloat. An abomasal bloat in lambs is said to have an 80 to 100% mortality rate. But here's the reality. Bloat just means a distended abdomen. If we referred to a bloated dog, for example, we could be talking about stomach bloat, digestive tract infection, an enlarged spleen or liver, bleeding out on the inside, a ruptured bladder filling the abdomen with urine, cancer. There are so many causes of an enlarged uh, abdomen. It's no different with lambs, so it's no wonder that mortality rates are so high when they are often treated all the same. Let me tell you a little bit about an experiment that I have run for myself. During the springtime, we have a lot of bottle raised lambs coming into my clinic with bloat. Spring before last, I was so gutted with the number of these cases that I started offering real hospitalization, diagnostic testing, ultrasound to get to the bottom of what was going on on the inside of that lamb before barging on with treatment. And here's what I found. Of 13 cases, only two were true abomasal bloats with gas in the abomasum. Another two were toxic clostridial infections in the intestines which is where there was only a small amount of bloat throughout the intestines, but the lambs were deathly lethargic and were in shock. They needed to be euthanized, those two. One out of the 13 was constipated from a sudden diet change from milk to a high energy meal. One out of the 13 had been eating household trash and had a gut blockage, which came right with hospitalization and aggressive fluid therapy. Three out of the 13 were gut twists at various stages through the gut of the gastrointestinal tract. Those never end well, we call those abdominal catastrophes, they, they were euthanized. And one was a poor little thing whose abdomen was full of urine. Her bladder had ruptured from being beaten by a ewe that she was trying to drink from, it wasn't her mum. My take home message here is that if this is a pet and you want to get to the bottom of what's going on to have the best chance of survival, ask for diagnostic tests, ask for an ultrasound if there's a vet that's comfortable with, with that skill in sheep. Blood tests can give you further information. Getting to the bottom of what's really going on in there can be the difference between life and death. Keeping in mind, of course, that if it's really severe when you walk through those clinic doors, your vet may need to act quickly um, to try and save its life before having the opportunity to do those tests. So you'll have to just see what your, what your personal vet says on that. Okay, but it's just a bit of food for thought there before you go tarnishing all bloats with the same brush. All right, that's it from me. Spring is rolling back around over here, so it's on my mind again. Thought I'd do a little quickie for you. All the best for a happy, healthy, lambing, kidding, carving season, guys. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.